Good evening, I'm Alexandra Zaragoza with Valley Sports Network, and join us tonight as John, Vic, and Ron interview past legends of the Football Hall of Fame. Tonight we're here at the Imperial Valley Coaches Football Association for the 21st annual Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Good evening. Uh, we are uh, ready to begin our ceremony tonight. Uh, before we begin, uh, I am Craig Lyon. Uh, I am the uh, president of the IVFCA. Uh, I don't really know how. I am still the president of the IVFCA. I think it's because I was the one that took this over years ago, and, uh, and they just, nobody else wants to take it from me. But I really enjoy this night. Uh, this night is even uh, a little bit specialer than a lot of the other ones because, unfortunately, we all know that this probably should have happened about three years ago. Uh, but due to uh, the pandemic and stuff, it pushed everything back uh, to tonight. So that's what's special about tonight is that uh, we are, are back into uh, having the night of honoring these inductees uh, into the Football Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame was uh, started years and years ago with uh, Coach Swearingen and Coach Sturgeon uh, that was at Central uh, back in the day, and uh, they, they started this. So this is the 21st, for 21st annual uh, IVFCA event, uh, and, and uh, started out with some football games uh, and awards at halftime to this uh, nice dinner event. Um, so I want to thank all the, the coaches, Coach Swearingen and, and I know Sturgeon, uh, for them uh, to start this event. So thank you. Uh, just to, uh, as, uh, to give you a little bit about, I am the uh, principal at Central Union High School. Um, my overall coaching record as a varsity football coach is 0-2. That doesn't mean that I know much about football, but I was an athletic director and so on. So uh, that's why I think I'm, I'm one of the ones that, that takes on and, and works with this event. So. Just to give you a little bit of information about how tonight's going to work, uh, we are just going to uh, have an opportunity to uh, announce the inductee and give them a, an opportunity to come up and say a few words. Um, and, and like I said, it's just a, it's a night for hopefully this is the important part. You to be able to be here, to mingle with some people. I know uh, the rowdy tab table in the back, back there, I mean, you know, they started last night and they're continuing tonight. And so... Um, it is, it's just, but that's what it's about. It's, it's a, having an opportunity to, uh, to reunite with some people that might be, ha haven't seen in years uh, and to come back and honor those for their uh, accolades on the field, both on and off, because the, the individuals that go in here, um, the ones that are selected, uh, they're selected by each school, uh, not by a committee that we have, but each school selects their own and then lets us know and then we induct them. So. Those of you that are being inducted, you're being inducted because of the, uh, the schools felt that you were the inductees. Uh, because I am going to say some of these names here, I don't know who you are, uh, but that's not because, of, you know, I mean, obviously I'm a young one. Coach Swearingen's been around since, I think, uh, I don't even know, a long time, right, Coach? <laughs> yeah, three days older than Jesus is what it is. I, I've heard all these things, right? So, uh, I, I know Coach Swearingen probably knows almost everybody, even including the 1920s, uh, but I'm, a, I'm an 88 graduate from Central, so anything after 88, I probably know a little bit. So, uh, so let's get started with this uh, tonight. You guys haven't had an event like this since 2019. How does it feel to all be back? Well, it feels great to be back. You know, I mean, uh, we had this all set up to do it, you know, in 2019, and, and we were going to be inducting these inductees at that time, and unfortunately, due to COVID and stuff, we had to postpone it, and we finally are having the opportunity to bring them back. So I'm excited for that because I've been waiting a long time. Shit. I'm here uh, honored to uh, receive this recognition on behalf of my father, who uh, graduated from Raleigh High School, the class of 1952. And it just so happens that I came across the sweater of his. And uh, I, too, am a Raleigh High School graduate, as well as my Uncle John, who's coming up. Uh, he and my dad were in high school together, so I'm going to let him share a few words. But as I told my own children prior to coming here tonight, that uh, not only is this an honor, and uh, I just grew up hearing of, hearing of the story. <laughs> But living, you know, my mom, um, that was her younger cousin, so they all 
live out here in Mobile with my relatives out on the ranch, you know. And um, it's a hard thing because you know you don't know much about your family history, and then you start finding out stuff. And um, he lived, I guess, a very productive life. You know, and it's God's will that we're here, I'm here tonight to represent him. My mom has passed on and my aunt is 93, so I said I had to go represent. So I'm happy to be here and I thank you all for all the support you have given during this time. My mom was alive when they were going to do it initially, but she's since passed, so I told them I had to come represent. But I really appreciate all of all of your support. What a pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm happy to call it. Call someone from Raleigh. My senior year, we beat Raleigh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, could have served two years to do it, but we did. Uh, that was in large measure to our head coach, Kyle Jones. And I was privileged to be on his team. With me, I have Tom Slovak, an outstanding player in the 60s, a graduate of 1967, played on that legendary first team of legendary coach Cal Jones, and he's an inductee from the 1966 season. Welcome, Tom. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, and quite frankly, a great honor. I was born and raised in El Centro, and to come back here and see a lot of old friends, it's really quite special. Tell us, and the, and the viewing audience, what was the highlight of playing for Cal Jones, and in particular, that team that's still close together here this evening? Cal was an amazing human being. And I'll never forget, he made me a sinner. He stood over me and said, I'm gonna hit you with everything I have with no pads on, knocked me on my rear end and said, nobody in high school will ever hit you as hard as that. And that was Cal Jones. He was inspirational and just a great guy. Well, when I got here this evening, I was marked by Jason that I was gonna have to give the word of the speech. So I won't speak here, what's the name of our cabals? But basically, uh, I'm honored. Thank you so much. I want to thank the association for collecting me with this. I grew up in Old Mills. This is my hometown. Uh, I don't live here anymore. I left in I'm about 27. So, but it's always home. This is where I come back. This is where I came from. Uh, I love this town. I love the people here. And uh, it's an honor. We're here with Joey Silva from the class of 1969 of or 68 from that Herald Hopeville Viking football squad that went undefeated during regular season play and I believe even won a CIF uh, small schools division championship. Joey, a standout wide receiver, defensive back, kick returner, punt returner. He did it all for the Vikings. Joey, tell us, what was that experience like? It was the best experience of my life, honestly, to be able to play on a team that uh, we gelled so well as a group. We uh, all supported each other with it, and it's probably the highlight of my life being able to be part of that team that, you know, we went undefeated. I can't feel any better than that. And I played with some great guys, and some of them are already here as well, too, but it was a tremendous experience. For me. Just really appreciate uh, the honor of being selected by the association, and particularly my teammate and coach and dear friend Mike Swergen, and also Mac Fields, who I acknowledge them for their uh, consideration. And I'd like to say, just along with what Mr. Silva had to say, there in 1967, we had a tremendous team. And I mean, a guy with my meager abilities looked really good. I mean, we had Randy Palomino, one of the sweetest passes that you could ever, ever dream of. And you know, football, and during my time, 1963, all the way through 19, uh, when I left in 1968, the Imperial Valley, uh, was unbelievably talented. We had so much talent. Um, and you know, this is the IBC plaque, and, and I, I, really, I really appreciate that. But the year before, when I played with Ron Jesse, um, Ron Jesse was one of the best players I ever had. I learned something from that. Um, that speed, when you can get separation, it, you make the quarterback look really good. A standout All-State quarterback at IBC, Later parlayed that to a stellar career at the University of California, Santa Barbara, when they had a football program. And tonight, he's been inducted after a long wait, but we're glad to have him now. Randy, welcome. Well, thank you. I mean, it's a, it's a, 
uh, it's an honor to be here tonight with all these great athletes and, and, all, and all the support that's always been that way in, in the Imperial Valley. You people support your, your athletics, and I, I appreciate it, and it really gave me a spring load to my career. When they mentioned it to me, I brought a lot of memories back to me. And, uh, but first, I'd like to Thank my Lord, Jesus Christ. My, my life was uh, was not good when it started out. I born, was born in Raleigh, grew up in Maryland until I was nine years old. Didn't have the TV. I didn't know what sports were, but I knew I was fast. And my first coach was uh, a police officer named Glenn Crossan in Raleigh. And he was working in the boys club and so he kind of knew me and I saw all these kids in sixth grade with these shoulder pads and helmet and they looked really tough. And I said, I want I want that. I want to look like that. Miguel Tagabon was a grad of 1977, class of 77, played for under coach Barker there at Brawley High. Yes. Miguel, tell us what it feels like to be inducted to the Hall of Fame. Well, it's kind of surreal because I wasn't expecting anything like this. They notified me like three years ago that I was going to receive this, but then COVID hit and nothing transpired. So and then all of a sudden they told me that they were going to be inducting me again. And I was like, uh, very, I got emotional about it because I, and I was feeling honored by that, but it brought a lot of memories, a lot of emotional memories. And also, well, one thing that we all heard about speeches tonight, uh, Miguel gave one of the most heartfelt speeches there was. Uh, Miguel, that being said, what has football done for you in high school football? Because as, as you know, Valley Sports Network is for, for the high school athletes. Right. What did high school football do to you that could help pe athletes now and in the future? Well, the coaches um, gave me the confidence of, of being able to, do something and complete something and not just in football but in my academics right. uh, and my grades improved dr drastically because of the involvement that the the coaches had invested in me while whether I was playing football wrestling or, or track track right so I I appreciate it I've never forgotten the the investment they put into me and and I appreciate everything they did for me for me what a marvelous opportunity I had to grow up in Hopeville. Uh, a town that I had opportunities that I don't think I'd have any other place. With me is standout from the 1979 Hopeville High School team, Roger Rolfe. How does it feel to be inducted into the Hall of Fame? Feels great, but when I think of uh, the class of 79 back then, the football team, we had no standouts. And uh, at the end of the year, we won league, and then we lost in the second round at CIF, and no standouts. And it's because all of us worked as a team. The, the whole team was just a wonderful opportunity for me to play for. We were in a three-way tie with Imperial and Needles. And Need, uh, Imperial beat us, we beat Needles, and Needles beat Imperial. But we came out because we had won more games than any of them. One thing about football, you can't win without discipline. One thing about apparel is before every game, we had to go into the weight room in silence. No talking to nobody for half an hour. Anyway, we were playing Hopewell, and uh, I took my little dad and I fell asleep here and there in the weight room. And I woke up, and the drink up, we won 54 to nothing. So we got on the bus and told the coach, and he goes, Well, I hope that's right. I hope you're right. And, Halftime was 27 nothing. In the game, we beat Hobo 54 to nothing. And that's all I got to say. We're here with John Gentry, an inductee for the Imperial Valley Football Hall of Fame, representing Imperial High School from the class of 1975. He played on the championship teams of 1973 and 74, in particular the state championship team under John Tyree, John Gentry. Tell us about your experiences and your 
memories of playing on those two teams. Brotherhood, like you wouldn't imagine. Yeah, that's a brother from a different mother, like one of the guys said tonight. And uh, you just believed in each other, and you still believe in each other. And they're, like I said, they're all my brothers. When I was younger, playing football, I couldn't play Pop Warner because that's too big. They had a weight limit. And I couldn't wait to get out of that and get into high school so I could hit somebody. You know? I played three years on varsity, the only sophomore on varsity under Terry Lowe. Standing next to me is Brawley Wildcat, Tim McClanahan, three year starter from the class of 1981. Tim, being said that, you know, being proud of being part of the Hall of Fame now. What, what is it, what do you think high school football did for you? Oh, it taught me, uh, it was a team sport. Um, taught me respect, taught me uh, just to keep going. Um, and if, if you feel down, you just keep going up. Just keep working hard at what you do. This is a kind of a sweet, and kind of weird for me because originally when Jason approached me, he goes, hey, I'm nominating you for the Hall of Fame. And it didn't interest me because I've never gotten any recognition at the time. In high school, I was all league my junior year, honorable mention, no recognition, nothing paid for nothing. My senior year, we won CIF, we beat Imperial. Those were good, those were good games. Rivalry games, Polo Imperial. We beat Calexico that year, my senior year. We lost twice, once to Imperial and once to Yucca Valley. That's my only two losses. I'm here with Holtville standout from the class of 1985, Jose Larios. What was one of the most memorable moments that you can share with us that happened in 1984, the fall uh, of your senior year? It always goes to the last play that you play. And for us, it was our CIF championship game. It was against Imperial in Imperial. And doing the kneel down, it's always memorable. The victory formation. The victory formation. You can't. You just can't beat that one. Uh, three years in the making, so I went from one page to two pages to two and a half. Um, thank you to the Imperial Valley Football Coaches Association and Central Union High School for this special recognition and Hall of Fame honor. I played high school football from 1990 to 1993 and earned a scholarship to Shadron State College, a Division II RMAC or Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference uh, team um, where I played safety and later um, outside linebacker. Ron Valenzuela from Central Union High School from the class of 1993. So tell us about what you're doing now and maybe one of the good memories you had in high school playing for the Spartans. Yep. So I'm currently um, an associate director of athletics at the University of San Diego. I've been at USD since 2001. And in my role, I uh, assist with the oversight of our 17 Division I sports and 420 or so athletes um, to help facilitate a wonderful experience for our scholar athletes there. A lot of, a lot of this uh, success is based at Central, where you came from, and, and, you, and you've done something really well. So how about a, a memory from 1992-93 school year? Yeah, to me, it, it's about the relationships, the camaraderie, the friendships. Um, the coaches who really invested in us as children, as, as, as young men. Um, and, and to me, it's, it's not essentially about the four years at Central, it's about the 40 years after, or the 30 years after, or the 20 years after. Um, and to me, Central Union High School is a really special place. Um, and I think, you know, playing football at Central, uh, the big game was always the bell game versus Brawley. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough, we were fortunate enough to get a victory during that game, but then also uh, participating in the CIF playoffs my sophomore year. Um, I think that was a special group and, and we had a lot of talent on that team. So those two things really stick out. Um, I have the privilege to play four, four years in Martin for a collectible high school school. I was uh, part of the 1994 team. John, um, three years ago, I got a uh, message from him. He asked me for all my answers. I was like, I don't know what he wants. I'm 
I just want to. <laughs> so I gave him some. Three weeks later, I got the letter. So I said some right away, and he said, you got it? Yes, I did. Congratulations. I cried. A member of the 1993 Calexico High School DVL champs, um, his name is Farmer, Javier Robles. Well, that season that you played in 1993-94 was a special season because Calexico, after a period of, I think, 27 years, hadn't won a championship, and you and your, and your teammates under the direction of Cal Armstrong surprised the whole league by winning that championship, however, losing to the Central game, but being the number one seed because you had beaten Palm Desert. Right. What was one of the most exciting experiences that year for you? I think it was uh, against Indio. Um, we were down. We were on like 21-0. And um, I remember everything started on one play that I did. And I took him for 78 yards. And after that, it everything turned on and we won that game. Truly, I'm blessed and, and honored to be here. Um, and part of me being here was growing up, I, I was completely lost. As a kid, I was lost. I didn't really have, I didn't really feel like I had a sense of anything. But one of the coolest things is I've been a part of a lot of great seasons. I've been a part of a lot of great coaches. But one of the coolest things I've seen when I was growing up was uh, when I seen a dad playing football with his son. And that was the coolest thing I did. I'll start off by saying, you know, football truly is the, the you know, greatest team sport ever. Right, so I can't, you know, be up here without uh, giving a shout out to to all my teammates at Imperial, my coaches, um, and everybody that helped me along the way. So um, really big on gratitude, really big on saying thanks. Um, you know, this I know I'm the one being inducted tonight, but I think it's it's a, it's just a really cool opportunity to be able to say thank you to a couple people. Standing next to me is Andrew Reese, 2007 grad out of Imperial. Three-year starter for the Imperial Tigers at quarterback. Not an easy thing to do. Major accomplishment. That is why this kid's in the Hall of Fame today. Andrew, tell me how it feels to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Oh, it's an honor. I mean, um, aside from, from the whole sports aspect of it, it's just really uh, cool to be able to come over here and pay homage to a lot of uh, fellow inductees and, and everybody that's been inducted before me. Um, but, you know, really, uh, the, the first word that comes to my mind when I think about all this is gratitude. Um, and just being extremely grateful for, um, you know, being given an opportunity to play football in Imperial and, and ultimately um, for, you know, everything that my parents sacrificed uh, to get me there, um, along with, with uh, my brothers and my, my entire family who supported me along the way. I just want to thank everybody here, the, the, the association, everybody that made the food, that was good, thank you. Um, for my family, they were always there at all my games, most, all my life, supporting me. Um, I have a coach in here. I want to thank him also. Uh, Craig Martin, thank you also. My athletic director at Southwest. Um, I played football since I was seven years old, so I made a lot of friends. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, without him and his blessings, you know, I can never accomplish what I've accomplished and have the family that I have and everything. Um, I'd really like to take the time to thank my parents as well. Uh, we couldn't be here tonight because they just recently moved to North Carolina and so they're, they're recording it so they can see that um, yeah, someone you touched on parents and uh, sacrifices that they have to make for us when we're in sports and stuff like that. It's I gotta take it in for a minute. I, I'm gonna tell you, my mother-in-law has a way of being the celebrity in the room each time we get in this room. Not that long ago, Hopeville celebrated the 75th anniversary of the Carrot Festival. Then we came in here and we did our queen coronation. And as we sat at the table with her, she pointed out she was there for the first carrot festival. So I, I prepared some remarks here. When Mike Swearingen 
and Jim Sturgeon got together to create this Hall of Fame. With me is Mike Goodsell, who's being inducted as an announcer. He was the mayor of Hauteville, he was a girls basketball coach, and he's the announcer at the football games. Mike, how does it feel to be inducted? Well, it's, it's quite a shock in a way, because I knew what a terrible football player I was in high school. So I knew it wasn't for that, and so I had, uh, I had questions about how I got in here. Right. But uh, I have been announcing the games for, gosh, well over 20 years now. So, um, yeah, it's, it's quite an honor, though. That uh, concludes. Before we end, I do want to uh, thank uh, Valley Sports Network for their continued support. Uh, they are going to be, and, and as I said, if you want to find out information about how you can watch a football game every Friday night or Thursday night or Saturday, whenever they play, because we play all the time now, check that out. Find out about VSN because we really appreciate what they do to promote our high school athletes and our student athletes and future inductees sometime. Uh, we also want to thank the Swiss Club. They always put on a great uh, event. We thank them for supporting us uh, always. And then also all the coaches and athletic directors and administrators and so on for the, the, the local high schools uh, because without them we couldn't have an event like this. Uh, we put on uh, two events during the year, the uh, halftime uh, uh, induction dinner and then early in the year we do carnivals for the Frost JV and the varsity. And that's the way that we raise the money to help support the event and continue to support our, our uh, inductees and our student athletes. So uh, thank you so much for coming out tonight. We really appreciate it. I loved hearing all the stories and I look forward to hopefully seeing you in the future coming to some of these events and, and seeing some other inductees uh, uh, you know, being inducted into it. So thanks again. I appreciate it. Have a great evening.